Welcome to Harmon Meek Gallery in Naples, Florida. I'm Juliana Meek, and I'm so pleased to present this, our 25th annual solo exhibition for Hunt Slowenum. We've been here in Naples as a gallery since 1964, and we have represented Hunt Slonum since 1994. We're a family gallery, so my sister and I have grown up surrounded by Hunt's work, both in our homes and here in the gallery. We've found great inspiration and enjoyment in his work, and we truly hope you enjoy this video. Hi, I'm Hunt Slonum. I'm a painter. I live and work in New York City and in Louisiana and I'm thrilled to be speaking with you today about my shows. Show in um, Naples, Florida at the Harmon Meek Gallery where I've been showing for almost 30 years. This has been such a long tradition and it's continuing on with great steam and enthusiasm and excitement. This is a particularly challenging year and it's nice that we're doing this in spite of all obstacles. So we have a few questions for Hunt from our patrons. Now let's hear what he has to say. Do you have a particularly fond memory of your visits to Naples over the years? Our mom, Barbara Meek, has always really enjoyed antiquing with you and has fond memories of visiting the Butterfly Garden with you several years ago. Have your visits to Naples influenced your work in any way? It's interesting how we met and how they responded to my work immediately. The Meeks got involved with my painting and showing it so long ago. It's such a formative period of my life and that we've carried on for all these years has been almost a familial experience at this point. I think we've all kind of grown up together and coming to Naples is a restorative experience for me. We've only missed a couple of shows over these vast numbers of years. It's been probably one of the longest gallery relationships I've had. So thank you and um, done lots of projects together outside of the just gallery shows. It's nice that this has continued and been such a big part of all of our lives. Thank you. You preserve the past through the historical homes you have restored to their original glory, and you've in inspired the present through your beautiful paintings and sculptures. How would you like the future to view you as an artist? I've worked my whole life towards expressing myself through my art and my homes and my collecting, and I was very inspired as a child by people who did extraordinary things such as um, people that we lived near who had rainforests and had great tropical fish collections or shell collections or um, historic homes and little museums and that got me going as a child so my dream would be to have um, some kind of museums for my work and my houses so that the children could visit and find a way of expressing their talents and interests through what I've done. Uh, I find that I've had a lot of children that have visited have been inspired by what I do for whatever reason. And I just think it would be great to leave a history of the way I install things, the studios, the homes, as a, a, a visible record of one person's efforts on this planet and my spiritual inclination as well. What is it about antique frames that attracts you to both acquire the frame and to paint a work of art for it? I've always gone to flea markets in New York since the day I moved here. There have always been treasures here and in Louisiana when I was in school we used to go to Magazine Street and see these great vestiges of 19th century interiors which are very grand and a little 
little patina. Couldn't afford to do much about it in those days. But in New York, I had a show at VCU years ago, Virginia Commonwealth University, and they wanted me to frame my paintings. And I just couldn't, I didn't have the money to frame them in contemporary frames. And I discovered that a lot of them were the sizes of Victorian frames that were used so often for photographs in those days. So I started framing my works in them, but I had really had this love of opulent, gilded 19th and 18th century frames, all dotted through my life. Where it came from, I have no idea. So I just started using them and thinking of the bird in the gilded cage and the salon style hangings that I'd seen like at the Renwick galleries in Washington as a kid and the poof with the palm tree to view them on all four sides. I started hanging them in groups, which was a, became a real iconic piece for me, the, we call them the bunny walls, that came out of just having all these wet paintings to dry, and I just started plunking them on the wall, as did my molted feathers from my bird collection. But I get very excited about um, doing paintings for the frames, because a lot of them are odd sizes, and I love the way they look hanging in homes, particularly old homes, but they work in modern homes as well. So it's just been, um, you know, part of my art form is scouring the world for frames and having stories about a lot of them. Spirituality is so important to you. In the past, you've told us your painting method often allows your mind to transcend the physical. How has painting helped you through the uncertainty in 2020? Painting has kept me going through this period of 2020 into the new year. It is not a great period and isolation is kind of a new dimension to our reality, which is kind of overwhelming at times. I have buried myself in my work more than ever and it's really carried me through and I'm also working on new media, glass sculptures, bronze sculptures, there have been a lot of new developments in my work that have come out of this concentrated period. My work allows me to connect to my spirituality. I mean, every mark I make, I say a mantra. I'm completely in another state most of the time, especially when I'm alone and working. The way I work is very meditative for me, and I repeat mantras and different prayers and things while I go. I hope some of that transcends the painting and heals people. I've heard that it does and brings a lot of joy to some people. I would be lost without being a painter at this period of time. But we've had a lot of rough periods in New York over the years. It's never been an easy sail. <laughs> How has the past year influenced your work? During this past year and into this new year, which isn't a lot different, um, I think we're less scared, perhaps, than we were at the beginning. I was afraid to leave my studio, so I was taking on challenges with um, going into more labor-intensive works that I hadn't visited in 20 years, such as my ocelot paintings, and I just that's all I did. I got up in the morning and painted. I went to bed at night putting the brush down. I didn't see many people. One person that works with me came in every day and that was really the only contact I had except my bird keepers were able to get here by a miracle. I always have the company of my animals, but I had been used to going out, you know, many nights a week. Not to big parties with dinners and different things. And now, um, you know, we have to sit outside in the cold if we do it, and it's a challenge to say the least, but it's the only way you can have contact pretty much. I didn't travel a lot on top of that, and I was afraid to. I've gone to my homes in Louisiana three times in the last year and a month. I used to go for a week a month and sometimes travel five times a month, but that's been curtailed. I have just, you know, I live for my painting. Just 
getting up and painting. It's not about the shows, the sales, or whatever. It's just what I do. And it's really, my friends and I talk about how blessed we feel that we have this throbbing, passionate, all-consuming need to do works. You know, no matter what happens, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> but this has been really, really a wonderful mind-activating period. It's really a wonderful challenge to know that it's possible that you can get through this. You've said it's hard to beat nature, but you certainly capture the vibrant colors and variety of nature in your work. Where would you like to be inspired next? Okay, apparently I've been quoted as saying that it's hard to beat nature as a source of inspiration. I think that's the end of that thought. But in terms of what I might find inspiring next, it's really hard to tell, but it's usually from the natural world or color from the world of publicity and fashion and even again back to nature, you know, you see these amazing colors and tropical bird forms and rocks and plant life advertising sometimes comes up with some good ones. I don't know where my next source of inspiration will come from. I mean, who would have thought that it would be glass or metal? But there it is. That's the exciting part about all this is you really don't know. I mean, I've added a lot of new media to my painterly form in the last years, such as diamond dust and metallics and um, different forms of mark making, resins most recently. So I love to explore, I love to add new things into my repertoire, both subject matter wise and materials wise. And I really, things that happen to me are not calculated or planned, they just evolve. And it's like, it falls from the highest realms into my consciousness. So I, I can't answer what, what it's gonna be at this time, but I'm sure though, before the end it'll be quite a lot of new things. Thank you.